What's up everyone? My name is O'Keefe Fish and in this video I'm going to explain everything you need to know about oxycodone, which is the main ingredient in Percocet, oxycotton, roxycodone, and others. I'll give scientific information and explain the effects, duration, dangers, my own experiences, and much more. Plus, I'm going to break down why and how profit-driven companies and big pharma created the opioid epidemic crisis, which has in total killed over half a million people. So if you like this content, please consider subscribing. It's free and you can always change your mind. So what is oxycodone? Oxycodone is used to treat severe pain and is one of the most commonly used opioids in medical settings. The opiate is derived from poppy plants and is mainly used to treat serious pain in people such as cancer patients, chronic pain sufferers, or people recovering from surgery. It provides relaxing and pain relieving effects by binding to nerve receptors in the brain and blocking the pain signals. Obviously the main benefit is pain relief, but other positive effects include euphoria, mood lift, relaxation, anxiety relief, and music enhancement. Oxycodone is intended as a safer alternative to morphine and comes in many different forms as well. Percocet is a combination of oxycodone and acetaminophen, also known as Tylenol. Oxycontin is an extended release form that releases oxycodone into the bloodstream throughout the day. The onset is about 30 minutes and lasts roughly 8 to 12 hours. Roxycodone is the immediate release tablets that are released in the bloodstream right away. The onset is 10 to 30 minutes, lasting roughly 4 to 6 hours. The negative side effects of these drugs include loss of appetite, dry mouth, dizziness, headaches, itchiness, fatigue, and nausea. It can be even more dangerous when combined with alcohol or benzodiazepines, which greatly increase the risk of overdosing and possibly dying. If someone does overdose, a shot of Narcan will counter the effects of the overdose and save them from dying almost instantaneously. Long-term usage of oxycodone can result in physical dependence and cause insomnia, excessive sweating, anxiety, restlessness, and muscle aches. This is why oxycodone can be extremely addictive and make people physically dependent on it to live. This now brings me to the next part of the video, where we are going to break down the entirety of the opioid crisis. Let's start off with this. How do people become addicted to opioids in the first place? Usually, it starts with some sort of injury, which leads to a doctor prescribing opioids. So let's say an athlete plays football and tears his ACL on a play. The doctor then prescribes him oxycodone to help aid his knee pain. So okay, the athlete starts taking these opioids during his recovery to alleviate his pain. During this time, he starts to really like the way these pills make him feel and develops a dependence on taking them. A little later, his injuries all healed up, so the doctor cuts off his prescription. Although at this point, the athlete is physically dependent on taking these opioids, but he can't get any more because the doctor cut him off. So now he has to resort to buying them on the black market. Now, the athlete starts buying oxycodone off street dealers, but after a while, he starts running out of money because oxycodone pills are expensive. So instead of buying pills off the street, he then switches over to heroin due to the fact that it's significant significantly cheaper. He starts off with just snorting heroin, but after a while, he starts to build a tolerance. So in order to combat his tolerance, he instead changes to injecting heroin into his veins with a needle. Fast forward to a week later, he ends up buying heroin that's laced with fentanyl. And when he goes to shoot up, he overdoses and dies. And there you have it, the timeline and process of someone becoming an opioid addict. In this case, you have someone who started off as an athlete who just unfortunately got injured during a game. He went from taking opioids prescribed for his pain to shooting up heroin on the streets. And it can happen to anyone too. Anyone who's prescribed opioids can end up like this. They become dependent on them and then they are cut off by their doctors. And because they can't get them anywhere else, they have to resort to the black market. And once you resort to that, you never know what batch could have fentanyl in it and kill you, whether it be oxycodone, heroin, or whatever. This all really started in the 90s when profit-driven companies and big pharma such as Purdue marketed oxycodone by overstating their efficacy and downplaying the risks. They marketed it by saying opioids are much less addictive than originally thought, and they would even send sales reps to a aggressively market much stronger doses to doctors. This led to opioids becoming overprescribed, causing many people to become dependent and addicted to them. And they're still overprescribing them to this day. Long story short, I've had a handful of back surgeries in the past few years, and just from those three surgeries, I was given hundreds of pills for three surgeries. Luckily, I have a decent mindset and never got addicted, but that's not the same story for everyone. I could have ended up like that football player or anyone else. Like I said, I was given hundreds of pills. The opioid epidemic is the deadly drug crisis in American history, killing about 128 Americans per day, which is about the same amount of deaths from car crashes and gunshot wounds. Essentially meaning that these drugs kill more people than actual violent events. As stated before, these street dealers are cutting it with fentanyl, which is a hundred times stronger than morphine. You can literally die off just a few tiny specks of it. And as time goes on, more and more stronger drugs are being developed and cut into these opioids as well. Recently, one that's come out is called carfentanyl, which is a hundred times more potent than regular fentanyl. 
One gram carries 50,000 fatal overdoses. You could take out an entire city with just one gram. There's also another drug that has overdose potential, but before I talk about that, please remember to smash that like button and subscribe for more good vibes in the future. Follow me on the internet is completely free and I love to make you part of the journey. Now, if you wanna learn about a different drug that has overdose potential, click this video to learn all about GHB, which is a famous party drug used by people like college students, concert goers, and many more. My name is Loki Fish and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.